Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and earlier this week I covered a tool created using the Godot game engine called Union Byte Painter, which basically you can think of as Substance Painter for Pixel Artist. And I decided at the time I'm going to probably do a rundown or uh, a summary of all of the tools made using the Godot game engine, and the community pointed out one that I definitely missed. So I've covered most of them, I'll do a summary video at some point in the near future, but Heavy Paint is one tool written with Godot engine I have never covered on this channel until today. So what we're looking at today is Heavy Paint. Now this isn't really per se a game development tool, even though it is created using a game engine. Instead, what Heavy Paint is all about is kind of a distraction-free tool for artists. The entire idea here is learn through limitation. It is just get out there and start drawing. Now, this is commercial software. It's fairly cheap. It's about 15 bucks. We'll get back to that in a minute. Available on a number of different platforms, Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, and iOS. You can get a 31-day trial with it for free if you want to go ahead and check things out. And it's the free trial we are going to be looking at today. So the entire idea behind this guide, let's go ahead and jump into it. Here you can see it in action. It is a minimalist tool set for basically drawing and painting. So for example, here you can see I have O for the oil brush selected, and I can basically just come in here and start drawing. You kind of got a very natural media painterly flow of things. You'll see layers interact with each other. So you can see here we got colors uh, kind of transposing on each other. I can come here and start using a blur tool and start rubbing things together, get kind of nice looking painting effects. And the idea is basically just to come in here and start working. In fact, if you want to do it really focused, you could come in here, see here we got a timer that we've got set up. So if you want to do, okay, I'm going to do a five minute speed paint. We can go ahead, start the timer down here. I think I missed the button and it'll basically just start counting down. So if you want to just do a five minute sketch, you can limit it on the timer over there. You have a number of tools available here across the top. As you can see, we had the oil paint brush selected right here. Your color selector, it's pretty straightforward up here. You can pick the uh, the saturation or the luminosity, I guess that would be luminosity, available down there. You got control over the brush size up here. All pretty straightforward tools on the whole. Layers interact with each other. Uh, you've got control over how said brush works, so you can control the rotation mode as we're moving our streak, our... Um, uh, what is the word on the stroke? <laughs> Look, I was having a stroke there for a second. Uh, we got control over how our stroke is controlled. We got control over the angle of our brush right there. So we can orbit that different directions. So you can see it in action right there. Up here, you have some other controls over basically how the brush stroke works over time. Speaking of which, if you have a tablet set up, you do have control over the tablet options. You have support for Win Ink and Win Tab support. Uh, you have the ability to turn things on and off to your heart's content. So if you want layers and don't want layers, you've got that option available right there. You can even turn on hardcore mode, which basically gets rid of things like eyedropper, undo, and redo. It kind of forces you to paint um, naturally. So, so if you want to, if you make a mistake, what you basically do is paint over top of it. I am no hardcore person, and I like the idea of having things like uh, you know, a color picker available right here. That's useful to me. So I'm going to leave that on personally. Now, in terms of the brushes that are available, you can see over here, uh, we have control over, you know, basically showing and not showing various different paint tools. We have a number of them available. So we could do chalk, circle drawing, filled halos, liquidify, rectangle transform, uh, chalk noise, circles, fibers, fill, lasso, pills, boxes, charcoal, and then all the ones that are enabled on here and so on. So if you wanted to use uh, watercolors or sponges or whatever, you can turn those things on. So let's turn chalk on, for example. For example, let's pick a whitish color. So now we are painting in a chalk type brush. So you have the ability to turn the things on or off. So for example, here, I don't want airbrush. I don't want the eyedropper. I don't want hatching. I just want pencils, lines, undo, redo. Um, so basically, turn off whatever you don't want to use, and they're gone. So there we go. So now you have a minimal set available up here. Now, one piece of feedback I would really like, especially when you're first learning heavy paint, is I want mouse overs. I really want tool tips. So right now, we basically have to click the tool to figure out what it actually does. So here's your line gradient, for example. In order to figure that out, you basically have to click it to figure out what F is. Same thing here, your blur. You got to click it to find out that that is, in fact, a blur. Uh, but it, it is a very distraction-free approach. You've got a lot of configuration controls over what you're working with again. Uh, even set the UI. So you notice we kind of got this dark off purple. Uh, if you're one of those people that wants your eyes to bleed, uh, you have that option. So you can come here, we can make it a pure white background. 
And then our UI is going to be very, very white. If you're one of those dark mode people, uh, you can go as dark as you wish as well. You've also got control over your canvas, your canvas size. Uh, you have the option to, to show the hotkeys that are available or hide that if you wish. In terms of zoom, you got really nice zoom controls, very nice and smooth and work. Uh, middle mouse button pans around, or sorry, no, middle mouse button seems to zoom. Hmm right mouse button pans. Okay, uh, so you've got control over uh, zoom in and out, very uh, smooth and clean. So if you're coming in here, you're basically just doing, um, you know, an art sketchbook. That is what this is all about. It's all about focused art production uh, for the most part. So you see here, uh, we we'll go back out, let's zoom back out. You'll see over here, we've got a couple of other options available. Uh, you can have it auto save as you go. Um, there are some tutorials available as well. You can control the canvas color. So if we'd rather have that to be a lighter canvas instead of this dark gray, uh, you can do so. And uh, yeah, so you've got nice control over things that way. Additionally, if I shut this guy down over here, we have the option for our sketchbook. Uh, so our sketchbook can have a number of different uh, drawings across the board. Uh, when you're in a drawing, you also have the ability. All right, so let's let's go in, start working on that guy. I think I hit it though. So I think I found a little bit of a glitch here. So if you set the UI color to a little bit too dark, you may lose something here. So I should have in my, oh, I may have turned this off by accident. You, you also have ability to do multiple um, drawings within each particular layer of the art book. Uh, so one of those things to be aware of. So you can have multiple art books, but you can also have multiple drawings in each. I don't know what I've done. Probably one of those things when I turned various different, things. maybe that's layers. Yeah, so layers. So you've got the layer controls available over here. Um, and you've got the option of ultimately turning those off as well. So uh, you've got, again, your controls are done via um, this art book layout. So all of your stuff is organized into various different books. Those books in turn can have multiple layers so I can draw on top of things if I wish. So let's go back to the, oops, right here. We're in a mode. So I come in here, I can start. Oh, my timer ended. Okay, that's fine. Um, so then I can come in here and start drawing literally. Let's do another layer here in and you can draw layers on top of other things and have it interact accordingly. And then you've got layer control available here as well. Just click it, you can merge it down, duplicate it, and so on and so forth. So if you want layer support, it is there, kind of an advanced feature. When it started, it had no layer support at all. But again, everything you see is configurable, period. And I think when you switch term layers off, uh, it ultimately does a merge. So the entire idea behind this is kind of like a focused painterly art style. You go in there, you do your sketching, you do your drawing, whatever. It gives you just enough tools uh, to get what you want done. You've got complete customizability of what you're working with here. In non-hardcore mode, you also have full undo and redo support, which is definitely a nice thing. And that's basically heavy paint in a nutshell. So if you're looking for kind of a focus on art style tool, heavy paint could be a good fix for you or a good fit for you. Again, available on a number of different platforms. If you want to pick it up, um, again, there's a 31 day trial. The, the full version is available. This is um, Gum Road, by the way. Pro version can be bought for $19.99. Student version is available for $15.99. Um, and the license key for Mac, Windows, and Linux. So uh, once you've bought it, by the way, it's it's activated directly inside of Heavy Paint. So unlock Pro, and you put your code in like so. Uh, so definitely a nice program in that regard. It's available again on uh, Gumroad. Um, it's also available on the Apple App Store for iOS, for I, um, iPad, and iPhone. Uh, basically layouts available for both of those. So if you'd rather draw on those devices available there, it is also available on um, Android applications. Although here, there does seem to be a little bit more of reports on for technical problems there as opposed to um, more, more so on the program itself. Uh, but last October, uh, updated on October 21st. So it's definitely a program that is seeing improvements. Now, if you're interested, I'm, I'm going to do a follow-up again of uh, tools that were built using the Godot game engine. But other ones about drawing that you may be interested in checking out. Pixel Over is one that we checked out. Uh, it's a painting application built entirely uh, using the Godot en game engine. And I think it just got an update, to be honest. And then also the Pixelorama. This is more aimed at pixel art and pixel animations. Another one that was built using the Godot... Uh, 
the Godot game engine. Uh, definitely one I'd recommend checking out. But today what we focused on was heavy paint. So again, I guess we could call it sort of um, a minimalist or distraction-free painting application. Again, built using the Godot game engine. I'm going to sum up all of these into a future video where I have you know links to videos I've done on all of the various different tools made with the Godot game engine. If I've missed one in the past, do check. You know, just basically search game from scratch Godot and then the name of the tool. And there's a pretty good chance I've covered it. But if there's other stuff I haven't covered, let me know. I want to try and get something about all of them before I do a roundup video of the Godot powered tools that are out there. So if there is another one, let me know. You try out heavy paint. Let me know what you think of it. Comments down below and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.